शी सोलवे से सुनो सबकी पर करो मन की and you once you visit Oman and you see how I think you need to have a lot of self awareness I mean, a... the biggest challenge is that people actually are self doubting so i had the opportunity to practice four times every week on school time the, uh, the motto is not to be the first indian or the best indian we do 70% of my sessions for preparing on my strength bushan keep yes. the sports champ magazine going because you inspire all of us in school that when i played first time for india it was at the age of 20 the other thing that's also helped me greatly is like the yoga i don't practice. think any sportsman can achieve anything without family support hard work plus courage is equal to champion try to work something on the brand you have strong strong uh, grassroots grassroots training system i think that will really help uh, our generation that you know if i can walk around if i can run around like a normal person i might as well drive it like a normal yeah, person the experiences that is being shared on this platform is i think is priceless so i you know hats off to you for uh, really encouraging uh, sports in in the youngsters it's so amazing uh, that mr bhushan you have taken up upon your selling so this platforms gives every educators uh, a boost uh, to think and so i would, uh, would like to tell all the educationists that let us not uh, give uh, sports a, like you know uh, like a step motherly treatment your initiative taken bushan i really appreciate that this was literally missing the goal setting i feel basically can be achieved only if they are your own personal goal good evening everyone it's amazing to so, see so many people across india from all sports champ association school have joined the session today sports champ is india's first ever sports education platform exclusively designed for schools operating in india sports champ vision to create a structured road map and a grassroots level to develop sports and sports person and guide in the journey of sports we'll keep such bringing various topics every month which will guide students parents and everyone and be aware and latest development in sports which play a important role in planning of sports journey our today's topic is fitness in sports importance benefits myths right way monitoring analysis and more about fitness in sports we have with us a very special guest who will guide us all on the same at the end of the show we will take some questions from the audience so you can keep writing questions on the chat box and we'll pick up the questions from there now let me introduce our special guest of today dr sonali sonali talavikar she is an a uh, homeopathic physician and a lifestyle coach with 28 years of experience in the health of wellness industry she is the founder of sarona wellness consultant and she has worked with different demographic offering tailored wellness programs this includes pediatric and geriatric populations women factory and shift workers and corporates mental health body image and body shaming comprehensive sexually education are some of her other focus area she has been part of numerous train and trainer program pertaining to fitness and wellness has created executed humorous courses workshop and training she is an ipl ambassador and the pantheon india ambassador so over to you sonali hi good evening everybody thank you so much for the very action uh, i have been part of the uh, i might say sports champ uh, team by being one of your uh, you know writers right in the beginning and it was a pleasure to be able to contribute to this brilliant journey that uh, bhushan and you have started Uh, by being the first sports education uh, you know magazine in the country and uh, before i start my topic for today i really wish you uh, you know growth by leaps and bounds right so uh, let's get immediately started because i know that i have been 
and uh, more than anything i feel that the topic is really huge so when i was preparing my presentation uh, i was told by arti that you know you need to have fewer slides but i felt that it wouldn't be fair because this is a, a very important a very controversial and a very misunderstood topic which is fitness in sports the importance of fitness now when one is a sports person one is playing sports naturally you start becoming fitter right but at the same time are you fit enough to play the sport to the degree that you want to take it to or to the level that you want to eventually achieve right so i uh, when i asked arthi uh, who my audience is i was told that i am speaking to a very elite uh, audience of sports coaches um, you know uh, pe directors uh, school heads institute heads and of course uh, my dear children uh, most of you are pursuing some sport or the other and i know that eventually you want to reach the top of your game and there are so many people uh, you included who are you know taking you towards your ultimate goal right now um uh, i have planned this presentation in a very um, you know i've tried to correlate certain things which includes first of all your understanding of fitness secondly some of the components of fitness which might already be known to you hmm? third point that i felt that needs to be covered is how do you develop these components right now the audience is very broad there might be people who are playing uh, you know an individual sport some of you might be playing multiple sports some of you might be in a team sport hmm? uh, you are also playing at different levels some of you might be beginners some of you might be representing the country some of you might uh, be somewhere at a mid level and are hoping to achieve something higher but no matter where you are in your sports journey your fitness is critical right now take it from me uh, one other introduction that i would like to give which i did not mention in when my uh, introduction was requested by sports champ is that i have been a regular exerciser and a trail runner for the past 40 years and let me tell you while this has helped me in my physical fitness this has helped me tremendously in all aspects of my life right so without much ado if arti we could start with the presentation yeah thank you i'll just keep queuing you arti whenever i need the uh, i can't see the screen arti it's too high so could you adjust it i'm not able to read it because uh, you know the entire writing is right on in the upper quadrant so is it possible to change the layout so that i can see it yeah right while the presentation is coming up uh, each of us has different ideas of what fitness means right it's okay i i don't think it's going to be visible properly because it's really high i can't see it at all i don't know the audience can you see it can somebody from the audience just unmute and let me know if you can see the presentation any one person please because i cannot see anything okay let's not let's not wait for the presentation let's go uh, you know let's go organic right so each one of us has a different understanding of what fitness means to us uh, nishant is it visible oh that's cool i can't see it i really can't see it at all right <laughs> all right so uh, when we talk about fitness there are so many aspects of it right so when we say that a person is fit it essentially means is he or she able to thank you thank you shivam lakshmi ma'am but uh, i think uh, i just have to go with uh, whatever i can see right now yeah so uh, essentially 
each one of us has a different understanding of what fitness is for us individually right for someone it might be the ability to just you know get through the day for someone it might be some health goals because they've been told by their doctor that you know you're not well enough and if you don't take care of your fitness uh, you know your health problems are going to escalate for somebody who's a sportsman it might mean that i wasn't able to perform as well as i intended to in a particular competition and if i don't buck up this could mean that i'm off the team it could also mean the difference between a podium finish and not being on the podium at all right so each of us has a different take on what fitness is but essentially it is all about energy and having enough energy enthusiasm to do the things that you have to do hmm? and over and above that have the energy left to do certain things that you want to do and also meet some unforeseen emergencies that might arise right now when we are talking about fitness today i'm not going to talk about the different aspects so when we are talking about performance per se when we are talking about fitness related to sports hmm, we have to think about a multi pronged approach right so we are talking about how well an athlete is training how well he or she is um, resting and recuperating how well he or she is mentally prepared how well he or she is eating the nutrition strategy but today the focus is only on the physical aspect of fitness and how do you build it up what are the various components that we need to focus on to build up fitness right so um, right so we are dividing fitness into three categories one is metabolic fitness the second one is physical which is the second both the things that i'm talking about all of it is physical fitness the second one is your general or health related fitness and the next one is your skill related fitness so if you are going to imagine hmm, let's look at the metabolic fit fitness separately metabolic means how your body how your internal systems are functioning and this is determined by different things such as your blood pressure such as your heart rate such as different hormones in your body right but for now today we are going to leave that a little aside but it is equally important right so just as imagine that we are building up a building or we are building a pyramid and we are starting at the base now the base does not mean that it is at a lower level it just means that it is something that you need to first focus on to build on top right so any building which does not have a strong foundation is going to have some problems if it's not completely going to fall it's definitely going to have certain issues over a period of time right so therefore when i'm talking about fitness today we first focus on the health related components which are mandatory for each and every one of us to focus on again while i'm talking i realize that you know a fitness goal is not a fixed goal right it keeps changing and your strategy also needs to keep on changing um i i know that i'm talking to an audience who have probably read a lot whether it is through books or whether it is through you know different um, you know channels that we have today including uh, you know the web etc or whatever uh, magazines you read or whatever literature that you that you read but there are uh, you know uh, there are different theories there are different ways there are different perspectives of looking at fitness but our focus in today's discussion is on the scientific basis right even in science there are different approaches and there might be certain coaches amongst us who feel no no i don't agree with this i don't agree with this particular thing i feel that this is a sure shot method of ensuring that my athlete or uh, my uh you know um, uh, the performance of my athlete is going to peak but no matter what your approach is i think we all agree that in the end hmm, your athlete's well being your athlete's performance and the longevity the meaning of longevity is that your athlete is fit throughout his or her life because we know that in competitive sports hmm, uh different sports have a different uh you know Uh, life span so you can be a competitive athlete for a particular amount of time in that particular sport 
Uh, yes, of course, we have veteran athletes as well. But even after you playing a, uh, stop playing a sport hmm, uh, professionally, what happens after? Right? Your fitness has to be intact, if not at the same level, but at a level which is going to keep you healthy, which is going to keep you fit for the rest of your life. So therefore, now first let's focus on the fitness components which we call health-related fitness. What does it mean that each and every? I think we need to go to the slide after that. Yeah. So this is metabolic fitness. After that, please, Aarti. Right. So I think most of us are aware of these components. I've given a pictorial there. And you can see that uh, it's not in uh, the order of importance. Everything is equally important. But everything is differently important for different people at different periods in their lives right but these are certain components that each one of us whether you're an athlete or whether you're not an athlete we need to work on these components hmm? what are these the first one is something which is known as cardiorespiratory endurance in common terms we called it stamina hmm? yeah aerobic capacity knowing that we are aerobic organisms what does it mean that we require oxygen we use fuel the combination of that gives us energy most of the time right so therefore having a healthy heart having a heart which is capable of pumping enough amount of oxygen to your muscles so that your, your muscles can take that oxygen combine it with the specific fuel you need for a particular activity hmm? which is even me sitting right now and talking to you, which is you listening to me. None of us are doing any sport activity at the moment, but we are using these components, some of it, hmm, because I'm breathing, I'm using oxygen, I'm using fuel, and therefore I'm able to talk to you, right? Hmm? So that is cardiorespiratory or cardiovascular uh, uh, endurance, hmm? also commonly known as endurance, and we measure it, hmm, with something called as VO2, which is the volume of oxygen. So if I have the capacity to take in more oxygen hmm, and utilize it in a more efficient way, I will be able to perform better when we are talking about any aerobic challenge. Okay. Now, any aerobic activity in turn means an activity which uses large muscle groups, which is continuous, hmm, which lasts for at least 20 minutes which increases your heart rate. So self-explanatory, if we are talking about events, these are events in sports, which go on for more than a few minutes, right? Where your heart and your lungs are challenged to deliver enough oxygen so that you can keep functioning for an extended period of time. Then you have muscular strength and muscular endurance, which I'm going to pair together, which are going to contribute to your muscle health. What does it mean? Your muscle is the one which allows you to move, right? And there is so much information, misinformation, myths about muscle building, how much musculature do you need to perform a particular activity, right? Simply put, muscle strength is your ability to overcome any resistance or a force, right? So when you're lifting something, pushing something, but when we measure our strength, we talk about the maximal amount of force that can be generated by a group of muscles. So I cannot say I am strong, but I can say a particular group of muscles is strong because it is able to overcome a particular amount of resistance. Resistance is something hmm, which needs to be overcome by applying an external force, which is this case is my muscle. Now, this is commonly measured by something known as 1RM. What does it mean? One repetition max. So to give you a simple example, here's my phone. I'm picking up my phone. And if I'm doing a biceps curl with my phone, I can do it like, I don't know, you'll get bored watching me. Eventually, we increase the weight. And there will be a time when I can do one repetition in good form, just about do it without you know, collapsing or hurting myself. This is my one RM and that is how we measure our muscular strength. Then we have muscle endurance. Endurance is the ability to go on. So as you can see in the picture, it's either holds or it is the ability to keep on repeating a particular movement. Now, as I'm talking, reflect about your own sport, whatever it is that you're playing. 
and think which component of this comes to the fore in the activity that you do most of the time. So are you doing a sport like wrestling hmm, where you have to pin your opponent on the mat? So I would say that a great component that you need to work on is of course muscle endurance. Okay, just to give you an example. And there are different tests to, uh, you know, to measure your muscular endurance, such as uh, the sit-up, hmm, which we don't do anyway. I should say the curl-up now, okay? Or we have the plank, which is giving you an idea about your muscular endurance. If you go and just type in hmm, tests for physical fitness, you're going to get different batteries. What does it mean? That there, have been, uh, there has been so much research Okay, all of this falls under exercise science hmm, and exercise physiology, right? So over a period of time, we have gathered a lot of information, a lot of data, and there are different schools of thought which will give you different tests. What we need to understand that which are the ones which are the most valid, hmm, which are the ones which are, uh, let's say, the most respectable and which have stood the test of time and which are the most suitable for your particular game or your particular, uh, you know, athlete, right? Then is flexibility, which means the range of movement. Hmm? Each joint, because of how it is, can move a certain way or cannot move a certain way. Any movement requires flexibility. Let's not think of extremes like gymnastics or let's not think about, um, um, you know, um, circus artists. But in every movement that you're doing on field or off the field or on court or off court, you will see that unless and until your flexibility is sufficient for that particular movement, your performance is going to be hindered. Okay. And, and the next thing is known as your body composition. What is body composition? This is talked about a lot, right? That is very simply put the percentage of fat and non-fat tissue in your body. Hmm? Now, I will not make any gross statements like fat is bad, non-fat, which is especially muscle is excellent. We require a particular amount of fat in our body to be able to survive and to function well. Okay. But for athletes, the standards for the amount of fat that is required will again change from sport to sport. Give you an example, a long distance swimmer or a swimmer in general will have slightly more body fat, even if he or she appears leaner, because they need to be buoyant. They need to come up. As against that, if you're talking, talking about long distance runners, hmm, the level of fat in their bodies is going to be much lesser. Okay? Hmm? Because they need to move fast and they need to resist their own weight and move faster. Right? Can we have the next one, please? I know I have just 20 to 25 minutes to finish this and I've given you too many slides. Okay? Right. Uh, what is the next slide? Can somebody tell me? Because I really can't see. Arti, there's no visibility. Can somebody just help me with this? Honestly, I can't see the slides. I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and open it on my phone if I can so that you know I have it on my phone just give me a moment there it is Apologies, everybody. Okay, Arti, can you just help me here? Because, you know, I really can't see the presentation. I don't know why that's happening. I can see just few, you know, just the top. So I can see my face. I can't see the next slide. I need queuing, please. Even if you tell me what the slide says, I'll speak. And I'm trying to open it here.
right okay let's just go it's, the way we are going so there are different ways um, in which you can me measure each of the components we looked at the components which i quickly talked about which are health related now building upon that we have skill related components right now uh, typically you will see that as you start practicing a particular sport more and more or you start becoming more focused on a particular sport you have to work more on those specific skills so we go from general fitness towards more specific fitness and this becomes very 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 uh, pertinent or it becomes very obvious as your level of performance starts increasing right so when uh, when we look let's say we look at a young athlete or a young child who has just started and is exploring different games okay there the general components that i mentioned right now are all going to be important okay hmm? so we are creating a base but as the child chooses let's say i prefer to play let's say table tennis or i prefer to play football or i play uh, i prefer to get in on into track and field events hmm? you will see the type of training that is required starts becoming more and more specific and now we are focusing more on skills right so when we are talking about skills there are certain specific skills hmm, which again have to be measurable because in the first slide i said that uh, fitness is a very individualistic thing hmm? what is my goal for fitness might be completely different from anybody else's in the audience but finally we need to quantify it right so therefore we have these specific components and in uh, skill related what are we looking at we are looking at agility balance coordination reaction time hmm? we are looking at speed hmm? these are some of the components which again have to be kind of measured oh yeah now i can see it uh, we can go ahead this was just the body composition how do you measure the body composition please go ahead uh, there will be the skill related hmm? just skip all of this because i've talked about it uh, what i like to do is that we can share this with yeah right so we can share this with the audience i'm completely okay with that so it can be sent across hmm? and if you look at these components which are present in front of you and what we have here is the name of the component the description of the component and some skill we have just i have just mentioned a single skill or a single activity in which this particular component becomes important okay but if you look at sport hmm, any sport it's not going to be just a single component which is going to be important hmm? there will be uh, a combination and at times you might have all the uh, components coming in in one movement okay so for example you're getting ready to do a broad jump or a long jump or a high jump think about what components of fitness are going to come into play to be able to execute that movement smoothly and to ensure that in the process a person is not getting injured now one very important thing that i want to talk about here is uh, nothing beats practice right so you do a particular thing million times and it becomes part of you hmm? so most coaches or most of us would agree that to get good at a particular sport or at a particular skill you need to be doing that activity so if i want to be a good swimmer i need to swim if i want to be good at breaststroke i need to kind of practice my breaststroke if i want to get very good at uh, let's say cycling no amount of running is going to have any effect on the way in which i'm going to cycle my stamina will increase with all these but as we are going towards specific as we are going towards a specific sport or a specific performance i will have to fine tune the tra uh, training so that no time is wasted in doing things which are not really going to contribute to the performance of the athlete and this is where sport specific training comes in hmm? so again to reiterate let's understand that you need a base and we are building up on the base and why are we doing this 
because we want to ensure that your athlete or you yourself are able to perform at your optimal right and when we talk about optimal we are also talking about injury prevention because wrong training done in the wrong way in the wrong style in the wrong form or the type of training which is not necessary for you will put an unnecessary burden on uh, you know your reserves on your capacity and this is going to um, not lead to the results that we are looking for right so these are um, some of the skills that we talked about each of these is measurable why do we need measurement in sport hmm? why don't we if we look at a person and say wow this person looks really fit okay but we need to measure it so i say yes i am excellent at maths hmm? sadly nobody is going to believe me unless and until i take a maths test and i score pretty well so same way on each of the components we have multiple tests it's not just one single test right like like i told you in the beginning again generally when we test fitness hmm, you can have field tests which are done uh, you know mostly are done outdoors these are very suitable for larger groups but as the level of the athlete gets uh, you know gets to an elite level you will see that we do a lot of lab tests okay especially when you are measuring something like the vo2 max hmm, which is maximum amount of oxygen which is consumed during maximum aerobic effort okay so you might have seen we'll be seeing some pictures eventually which are showing how are these tests done hmm? but why is testing so important because it is like a report card right so this report card is telling you that these are the criterion which are important in your particular performance sport okay and how are you doing on these particular components okay now here i am not talking about tactical or technical skills right that is something tactical tactical mental hmm? right in the beginning we said today we are not touching on it we know that performance is not just based on fitness but fitness is equally important you might have great technique you might have great tactical understanding you might have you know superb mental uh, concentration and uh, reserves and uh, you know um, how should you say you might be very determined but if you fall short on your fitness it's something which might uh, you know uh, help your opponent and not you right so therefore fitness is important and it is my uh, you know my uh, little effort or my proposal to just talk to you about it yeah, yeah? before we talk about all of this why what happens when you uh, you know all of you are very sincere athletes and i'm sure that you know uh, you take out time from your studies and everything and you prioritize your game your sport and Uh, you must have seen that over a period of time you have changed you have gotten better at your sport i hope that has happened because if it hasn't then you need to go back sit with your coach sit with uh, you know uh, your pe uh, director or your pe teacher and see why is it that you are falling short hmm? now whatever changes that take place with um, you know practicing certain things are known as adaptation right and in exercise physiology we have certain principles which i have mentioned here right so there is progression individualization uh, periodization okay and what does each of these mean that uh, when done rightly when there is a balance of these principles you will start seeing the effects of that particular training now let's just take one or two okay let's take individualization so what does individualization mean so we might have heard that x exercise works very well for abc sport hmm? uh, let's take an example of long distance running and let's take an example of squats okay hmm? but supposing there is a particular athlete who is not able to do squats in the correct way for some reason then what do we need to do to get the benefits of that exercise which we know are excellent for the quadriceps the hamstrings and just about everything the posterior and the and in the lower body we might need to modify it okay 
same way there is a team hmm? in a team sport we often see that the uh, training that is imparted or the fitness that is given is the same for the entire team right but depending on where what position you are playing your training has to be tweaked a little bit so that you will get the maximum benefit hmm? this is not only on field this is also off field okay so these are the different sessions which are apart from your play or apart from your activity which could be in a gym which could be the different drills that you are doing which are mimicking the action that you are eventually going to perform when you are playing your sport okay but this has to be done cleverly okay for example uh, just to train an athlete okay let's take an example of let's say baseball a sport okay uh, i want to get stronger so i take a heavier bat hmm, and i practice with it sadly hmm, why my muscles might get stronger when i am actually playing with a lighter bat okay there is going to be no conversion or no positive effect of that training in fact it is going to be a deterrent specificity what does specificity specificity i'm so sorry specificity mean hmm? whatever i've been talking thus far is specific sports specific does it suit the requirement of that particular sport that particular individual so even if we have given different names for these um, you know different principles you will see that they are interlinked okay we have periodization where you don't give the same program the same thing day in and day out because this causes boredom it causes loss of interest it causes injury and one of the main things that we have to remember when we are talking fitness is injury prevention so there are lots of fancy terms for this there is prehab ensuring that particular groups of muscles which are either excessively used or not used at all are being uh, you know used uh, you know challenged in the right way or being rested when required so that there is no damage or harm done hmm? um you can see that this is a kind of uh, indication of off field training hmm? you can see somebody who is probably an ice hockey or a field hockey player you can see somebody who is doing plyometric jumps probably because it's uh, this doesn't look like somebody who is going to be doing hurdles because they would have done a different training you can see somebody who is a rugby player hmm, who is working on his balance his agility and his coordination and this should transfer into his or her performance so that is what we look for when we talk about fitness which is sport specific and there should be an adequate transfer of training right so uh, i'm so sorry i can't read this but uh, i'm sure all of you can read what has been written and that is what transfer of training means now the fantastic thing or the not so fantastic thing or the fascinating thing about transfer of training is the more specific it becomes right the more specific you start training the less and less the transfer takes place okay what does this mean when uh, let's say you are a beginner who is doing different sports okay a child is trying out like i talked right in the beginning different sports so the child is doing uh, maybe football is also doing uh, uh, some amount of track and field some amount of field hockey or whatever it might be in school hmm? so by practicing these uh, skills hmm, he or she is base uh, you know building up a foundational base and there is a transfer hmm? so he or she is going to develop flexibility um, then uh, cardiovascular um, endurance um, a little bit of muscle endurance by doing all of these okay but as we go up or higher up on our pyramid hmm, of performance where you are focusing on your skill oriented or your skill based uh, how should you say training hmm? you have to kind of you know it's like uh, you know we have those uh, what are they called dart boards or we have archery where you or you have uh, you know shooting where you have to focus on the center hmm? in the same way as your focus narrows 
hmm, the transfer or getting the benefits becomes more and more difficult. So an athlete who is an elite athlete, okay, he or she will not show improvement or will not show gains as much as somebody who is at a beginning or a mid level because the scope is so much. Okay. So this is one way of looking at transfer of training. I cannot talk about um, this entire thing that I have been blabbing about for the last, I don't know, I think I'm even running out of time without talking about something which is known as the long term athlete development. Everybody, I think, might have heard about it. Again, you can see the arrows which are going from and the color code that you can see. You can see that in the lower picture, this is what the base that I was talking about. So you need to build a strong base where you are hooking the child and building up his or her confidence. Okay. These are fundamental uh, movement and sports skills. Later on, what are you getting them ready for? The ability to kind of perform, but not still at an elite level. And finally, at the apex or at the top, of course, is performance, hmm? which is a long journey. And if you see in the left-hand side corner, please understand that all of this is for life. No matter where you give up your sport, okay, at what level, even if all of us don't reach elite level, my request and my, uh, you know, I'm urging all of you, kids, hmm, that don't give up being physically active don't give up your love for sport. Hmm? I'm sure you'll perform fantastically, but there are so many ups and downs. You just need to find something that you excel at and keep trying and stick to it for life. Do not give up. Okay. Uh, finally, I think I've just given a couple of tests. Now, this is the standard test. Hmm? This is the APHER test, which I'm sure all sports coaches, all PE teachers and all schools are familiar with. Every year we give this to our children, right? Which measures the different components of fitness, okay? Now this is a base level one. All children go through it. But as we are going to a higher and higher level for particular sports, there will be different batteries of tests. So badminton will have its own battery. Uh, football will have its own battery. There will be some tests which will be in common. Okay, if you are an older person, hmm, uh, we have certain ways of testing the basic components. If I'm an older person who is, uh, let's say, uh, a recreational athlete, I need to test my or assess myself in a different way. If I'm an older person who is, uh, you know, still an elite athlete, I will have to do the same testing that an elite athlete of a younger age group is uh, going through. Okay, can we have the next one, please? Right, so here you can see some of the tests, right? I have given one, uh, you know, just to give you an idea of what testing might look like. Again, is this the only test which is available for racket sports? Hmm? Could It could vary. It could vary according to the coach. It could vary according uh, to the you know federations it could vary according to the associations it could vary according uh, to the scientific research or the papers that you are following but the science behind them has to be solid it has to reflect what you have been doing it's very simple if you are training right what should happen there should be an increment or an increase in your performance okay and that is what is visible or what is collected through your assessments, right? And therefore, both sports-specific training as well as regular assessments. Hmm? These are not to discourage you, to make you feel key. oh my God, hmm? I'm not very good at this particular thing, okay? So supposing a person is not doing so well on agility and speed, we need to understand what are the reasons for it. Is this child designed for certain activities which are good for speed and agility or do we re need to reconsider the sport for this particular child as you go to a higher and higher level uh, i mean the testing is unlimited you know you have uh, muscle biopsies you have genetic testing blah 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 
I have also given some references, which I have always gone back to because I have found that these are reliable uh, references. So if you ever need to find out more and uh, look up these references, very happy to take a few questions from all of you. All right, so okay. <laughs> here we go, Arti. Thank you, Sonali. I just want to ask, the, according to you, what is the right lifestyle? Okay. Right lifestyle, are you talking in terms of any particular Fitness. age group, group or for anybody? Right. You know, I feel, I feel, Arti, consistency, dedication, hmm, and respecting yourself is the correct lifestyle. Automatically, you will realize that you will eat well you will sleep well you will wake up in time for your practice you will pack your own bag you will do your own gear cleaning hmm? you will be focused not just in your sporting activity but in life in general so i think that is what lifestyle is all about it's as natural as breathing you know and it, it is, there is a fine line between being passionate and being obsessive. Okay. When I say respecting your body, even listen to sometimes when there are injuries. Hmm? Do not be a hero. Okay. Listen to that. Yeah. Treat those injuries. Uh, get into rehabilitation where and when necessary. Uh, when we talk nowadays, you know, there is a lot of fuss about clean eating and lots of different things you know shouldn't eat this shouldn't eat that right hmm? especially yeah. if you're a young person and you're developing eat well eat sufficiently eat healthily eat happily eat without a gadget in front of you please that is my request to you okay eat uh, to nourish your bodies okay and uh, correct, correct. go to sleep early because sleeping early hmm, for a performer, you are a performer, your body has to be, uh, you know, we have a biological clock. You disturb it, it disturbs everything. You have a match in the morning and if you want to stay up late on WhatsApp and uh, Snapchat, etc., etc., somewhere or the other, it's going to show. So uh, be consistent, be happy, be healthy and don't get disheartened. Whenever, you know, it's a graph. Life is a graph. It's not a straight line. So whenever you are a little low, remember the good times and remember what you're capable of and work towards. I think that's how it works. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. So thank you, Dr. Sonali, for taking out time and My sharing pleasure. with us importance and insights in fitness and sports, which, which will guide many persons in their journey of sports. So thank, thank you, you so much. And thank you all our participants. I hope this webinar will must give you the key insights which will help you in your journey of sports. Short, thank you. Short I recording is also a question. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Arti. But uh, so no, no Madam, problem. You can take a call. Uh, take a call. May, I, may I take the question? Right. So yeah, now sure, sure. arthritis, now whether... Now, there are two types, right? Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. So, first of all, we need to understand what kind of arthritis you're talking about, right? But for any arthritis, hmm, exercise is mandatory, okay? Going through a range of motion exercises gently, okay? Understanding the difference between discomfort and pain, okay? So, putting your... All the, um, you know, all your joints, the major joints, as well as the minor joints through exercises, which are going to increase your mobility. Extremely important. Secondly, increasing this by doing light strength training. Okay. And third, okay, uh, maybe using a multi like water, hmm? especially if you have a lower body arthritis, knees are the first to go. Okay. So exploring something like water exercises or aqua exercises might be something that might help a person. Please go and to a sports physiotherapist hmm, or a regular physiotherapist who will be able to guide you to create a safe uh, exercise program. 
Mr. Akash, see today's uh, this thing is not on mental fitness. So I'm sure uh, Sports Champ will invite somebody who is an expert who will talk to you about mental fitness. But uh, what I would like to say is uh, focusing on your goals, being happy and positive in life in general will have an effect on how you look at uh, your welcome man how you look at all the challenges that come your way and this is a learned process some of us are happy people we are born happy some of us doubt ourselves right at different but learning to focus on the uh, good voice in your brain and kind of not listening to the voice which is bringing you down so take Taking professional help, you are unable to challenges and difficulties. There is no harm in that. And I'm not talking only in sports. So we are not only talking sports psychology, but generally when you feel that certain challenges in your life are, uh, you know, you're not, not capable of handling, speak to, speak to, to try, uh, somebody who's, uh, you know, had more life experiences than you, could be your friend, could be your coach could be your family member and if they can't help please 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 go and see somebody who is a professional and can guide you all right i think uh, i have uh, you know overstayed my uh, you know i have kind of crossed the time that i was allotted so rp and bhushan thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, wonderful session and i really appreciate once again, everything that you're doing to promulgate sports uh, throughout India. And I wish you luck. And uh, to all the kids in the audience, just go ahead, have a bright future. And uh, hope that uh, you achieve everything that you're looking for and much more than that. And uh, see you again sometime. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sonali, Thank for you. taking out of your time and sharing. And big thank of our all participants. And I hope this webinar must have given you a key insight, which will help you in your journey of sports. Show recording is also available in Sports Champ YouTube channel and Facebook pages. If you want to refer any point, again, you can watch our video in the same. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.